I just want to apologize for calling you a cannibal because you're a freaking ghoul. Like, <laughs> you're a hundred percent a ghoul. Welcome to another episode of Volume 1, the anime and manga podcast where we review the first volume of a brand new manga each week. My name is Josh Ghoulish Michaels, and today, as always, I am joined by... Megan Caffeine Dependent Perrine. Uh, Cody Kafka-esque Decker. And we're going to get back to that, Megan, because I have some stuff I want to confront you about. Uh, but first, uh, uh, very odd... Huh? Very odd stuff happening in this series. What? T- tied directly to you, but we're going to get to that in oh. a little bit. Today, we are, of course, reviewing Volume 1 of Tokyo Ghoul. You know it. You probably love it. You've heard of it. It's a very popular series that's, um, you know, it, it's so popular that it has so many spin off series, so many sequel series, live action adaptations, light novels. It's got it all. Um, people. Definitely, I think, love the manga, have a lot of problems with its anime adaptations, Mm -hmm. um, Re specifically being one of those things. But we're here to talk about volume one of the manga. We just read um, and reviewed the first chapter of Chojin X, which we all really liked, which is also from Ishida, the mangaka of Tokyo Ghoul. So we figured what um, a better time than now to talk about the first volume. Um, I had never read it, and so I'm excited to talk about it. Cody, what about you? I uh, I watched some of the anime, mm-hmm. and then a couple of people were saying that the manga is way better. And I was reading the manga, and I was like, this isn't that good. The characters aren't that interesting. And I found out I was reading, like, the spinoff the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, I was Because I was really like, well, I really have nothing to say about this. And mm-hmm. I, was like, I, I was like, oh, this is the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this isn't the right manga. And then I read it, and I'm like, oh, this is really, really well done. You read Re. I read Re, and I was like... This is, I don't see how this introduces the series that good. Yeah. I don't know, when does the main character come in? Well, look, I mean, I haven't really... I mean, I've been shown some fight scenes from the anime and stuff, and I've been very aware of it, but I hadn't uh, ever taken the time to read the series. And after Chojin X especially, I was so excited, and I was not disappointed. Say what you'll, say what you'll say about the anime series, but the manga, Volume 1 especially, is, again, so well done. And we'll go through as to exactly why... But I have a, a lot I want to talk about. Yeah, me too, because I have consumed pretty much a lot of the anime series. Like pretty I've much seen a lot. A lot, pretty <laughs> yeah. much a lot. Tokyo Ghoul Season 1, Tokyo Ghoul Re, Tokyo Ghoul Route A, which comes after Tokyo Ghoul Season 1, Tokyo Ghoul Re Season 2, Tokyo Ghoul Pinto is an OVA, oh. Tokyo Ghoul Jack is yep. also an OVA. So yep. I've seen a, I've consumed a lot of um, Tokyo Ghoul. Had you ever read the manga? Though? I've never read the manga. That is the one thing I didn't do. But mm-hmm. uh, looking back and doing more research, I was the only anime watcher uh, for Tokyo Ghoul. And people were like, yeah, just read the manga. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Um, Ishida is, you know, proving himself, at least he's always been. But to me, I'm now realizing that he knows what he's doing, which is very interesting because we were told by one of our Discord members that we should read his um, Ishida's afterward, which is something that he posted um, after he had finished Tokyo Ghoul. And he gives a lot of insight into his process and how he kind of, you know, lost himself in, yeah. a, in a lot of ways during creating this series. Thank and, you, Mo, and, for sending uh, that. Yeah, thank you. It was a very, very interesting read, and I'm actually going to link it in the video a description down below so you can read it for yourself. But it, um, yeah, it, it gave me a lot of insight onto this person and, and how he thinks and how he writes. And Yeah, uh, uh, reading this, I'm like, all right, this, this is a lot of personal uh, experiences. Definitely, definitely. I think, um, you know, we also had a comment on our, our Chojin X uh, episode, I think, or maybe it was a discussion in our Discord, that it's just story over substance, it seems to be, um, or story over, or character over story. It just seems to me that this mangaka is a master at creating interesting characters. Um, I don't know what happened to Kaneki in the anime, but um, I've heard it's not it's not good. Uh, I mean, okay, so pretty much in the first uh, season of Tokyo Ghoul, it's uh, it's faithful now for the you're most part. Not gonna spoil the. No, story, I'm not. I'm right? not. Um, but there's <laughs> they went in a completely di- dire- different direction with the um, story in Tokyo Ghoul Route A. A lot of people don't find it canon like whatsoever, uh, which was interesting because I was the only anime watcher. I had no idea that this was you know deterring from the uh source material but even as an anime only watcher you're like uh and then I mean, Tokyo Ghoul Re is just like 
oh, like what is going on? Yeah, back to comparisons. I think that with the anime, it is for sure action before story, and mm-hmm. I think um, it's really not that way in the manga. Volume one to me, I mean, was so fun and such an enjoyable read. Mm-hmm. It starts with Ken Kaneki. We we meet our protagonist, and he is a likable book worm kid and immediately i think to myself as i continue to read the series just how smart of a choice it was to make the main character an avid reader because you can have a reason to constantly sort of parallel what he's going through with other you know real life works from famous literature and it yeah this is the second manga i've read that references the metamorphosis by kafka and mm-hmm. i finally got it it's like oh because that's about being overworked and how it turns you into a yeah, a useless machine. I don't remember because I was look reading about the metamorphosis, and they talk about how like well, one they never specifically say he turns into like a a cockroach. That's sort of just like implied, right? But also, it's like he, they say he has wings. So there's a lot of stuff about how like oh, he could have left, uh, yeah, at any time. I think that's a. Uh... I also thought the story and the comparison with the egg was really interesting as well, and how um you know it's a struggle to break from the egg and the egg is the world. So to be born, you have to destroy a world. I thought, you know, it's just to me really, really well written. Your future is an omelet. <laughs> Your future is an omelet. Yeah. I also too, like we're, we're definitely going to talk about volume one and go in depth as to why we enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, I'm assuming Megan did. She hasn't said it yet, but hopefully she did. We'll have to see. But I also want to talk about how just like, and we can do this now or towards the end of the episode, Uh, Just about how unfortunate it is when a series gets an adaptation that's not um, faithful to its source material and why specifically animes continue to make that choice Mm -hmm. when I don't think it's ever worked. Not once. That's an end of the episode discussion. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. But I can get how a book can get, you know, adapted into a movie and have things changed. But you got the blueprint there. I don't get it. It's a storyboard. It's it's you. Exactly. People have purchased the storyboard, so you don't even have to do that part. Exactly. And yeah, we'll talk about that more at the end. But um, so, yeah, starting out, we we meet Ken Kaneki. I thought this had a great opening. Me also. too. Me too. Great first chapter. Great yeah. introduction. All the characters, their roles are established. Their relationships are established. Um, even the friend. Hi or Hide. Yeah, I was reading it. Hide. I'm Hide. Um, yeah, Hide. Yeah, yeah. Hide. Just um, a likable sort of, I, I don't, I don't, rap scallion, I'll say. He's not like, he's, he, he, uh, he gets Ken out of his comfort zone yeah. a little bit by yeah. pushing him. He's a little um, uh, overly aggressively friendly, but I think it's part of his charm. Mm-hmm. He's an, it's just an interesting uh, dynamic between those two characters versus the two characters and friends that we get to see in Chojin X, which yeah. I couldn't help but constantly be reminded of as i was reading this but we meet him and and immediately we're let in on him being a bookworm and that uh he's going to this cafe to to run into this girl again that he's he has the hots for basically yep. yeah just that uh yep just, classic just case keep, just keep showing up there and eventually and a perfect opportunity you'll arrive i do want to say Ooh. too this manga specifically felt like it was written for volume one like it was made for volume one i'm looking at ken uh kaneki and his reasoning and his logic and what he plans to do on his first date and all i'm thinking is that's fucking cody (laughs) that's cody no i was thinking this is the cool part about being you know this the kind of person i am is like they end up writing a lot of stories so yeah. I, I get to relate to main characters a lot. Oh, God. <laughs> but it was like, yeah, we're going to do this, this, and this. I'm like, never works out, buddy. But you have that hope. <laughs> you have the hope. You have the hope down to the, even him explaining, like, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to talk about all the books that we've read. Oh, and we're going to do great, this. What a great connection. date that would be. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't help but see Cody in Kaneki in the very beginning. And then later, I, was I couldn't like, help but see Megan in Kaneki, yeah. if you know what I'm I, What do you about. mean? <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, I like- My cosplay? <laughs> Well, you know, that. Oh, yeah. For the listeners, I'm in full Kaneki cosplay right now. Uh, and you look great. I have my eye patch on and my black wig ready. I'm, I'm just, uh, I feel like I'm sitting, <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting across from Kaneki right now. It's a true honor. It's an honor. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> you mean that's not Kaneki? <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I was like in the, 
in in between reading this, I like went into the kitchen and I was like just talking to my roommates about a book I was on. And I know they pretend to like care yeah. because they like me, but they don't <laughs> care about the book. So it was nice to go about it. And then this guy's like, yeah, and we'll talk about books and we'll, we'll get along. And like, that'd be great, buddy. <laughs> that'd be amazing if you could just do that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, or also what I loved about this, too, is I think I even wrote this down. Um, you know, Ishida has an outstanding ability to create compelling characters before we are bogged down with the rules of the world and its power systems. We're given time to like fall in love and to know Kaneki, which I thought was a really smart choice. Like we are let in on the fact that there are ghouls in this world, ghouls that take the shape of humans and eat them. Mm -hmm. But it's not it doesn't concern itself with like a ton of exposition about why ghouls are there, you know, other than them occasionally eating humans. It doesn't really talk about their hierarchy or their. It doesn't. Yeah, it's it's a, it's more like a vampire type. Like, oh, there's vampires running around. Like, yeah. okay, sure, we know vampires, but like, why are they? Like, right. there's you know vampire lore, but ghoul is something completely different. When they're like actually just eating people, and then it's it's interesting to see like the power systems later and yes, all the different. But I think that's the important part is that yeah. it comes later. Like, yeah, I'm not at the beginning. To first, it came across like in this world you could get killed like by a ghoul, just like I you could get like. You live in a bad city, you could get mugged and stabbed. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that that is crazy, but it's like, well, I mean, don't walk around those parts at night and, you know, try to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like they're like, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> that's, that's something that happens. It's, it's something that murderers, they're, uh, they're yeah. living with it. They're just living yeah. with it. And it's a thing. And I didn't get uh, the sto first half of the story, didn't get bogged down with that too much. And um, so Kaneki runs into um, the girl that he's been wanting to run into and Rize. what seems yes Rize which and everything is like winding up perfectly he's like oh I don't know this is too good yeah everything is just falling right into place oh yeah they're making eye contact I love the you know Hide has this line where he's like she's probably looking at you because you just keep looking at her <laughs> <laughs> um which is yeah. a thing some guys do. Chill out, you know? Yeah, and it's like, oh, she's reading this book. I have so many things to say about this book. Yep. It comes up. Oh, yeah. I've actually, I actually read that book so I can have something to talk about. Like that. Yep. Aww. She makes eye contact with him, walks even yeah, towards you know, him. The second eye contact happens, you're thinking about marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely envisioning a life with that person, 100%. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> yeah. Um, she walks towards him, bumps into him, knocks his book over. They have this meet cute, right? And. Hide's already left at this point, but now he has this date with this girl and he's so excited and he goes back and he tells him and and he's like, well, I mean, every dog has his day, I guess. Yeah, you know? they're like, oh, okay. Even him, he's just like, okay, cool. Good for you. Even everyone thinks it's like too good to be true because yeah. kind of he's just this little like wholesome, like he's like a child, but he's in college. He just seems so like, just like innocent. He does seem very innocent. And it's because I think, you know, he's just been in to books and he's been more interested in in the world in a book versus the world that he actually lives in yeah this yeah. guy sounds like the coolest guy in the world <laughs> he actually. has his escape and he sounds like uh somebody i know oh mm. yeah another coolest guy in the world another coolest, coolest guy in the guy. world yeah sure oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so everything looks like it's going Kaneki's way he meets the girl for their date, they have a great date. Oh, it's going perfect. I'm like, oh yeah. man, yeah, you just gotta. Eventually, it'll happen. And you know, he's thinking, man, it's taken this long, but it's all worth it now because <laughs> I finally got the thing I've always wanted. And it's in that moment that she like embraces him, and we think that. Um, I at first, by the way, you know, kind of knew. That um, was the thing is I knew every like all that was going to happen, and I still when it like when she. Uh, yeah. bit down i was still like oh my god i was still shocked even though i knew it was happening going in yeah. wow really i mean i obviously i've seen like the first i've seen the anime but even in the anime i was like i didn't really think that that she was gonna turn out that way i thought they're like oh they like books I don't know. Yeah, call it life experience megan but nothing goes oh that yeah well, no dude. that was oh <laughs> you think a girl's really cute and you get along she turns out to be a man eater <laughs> what's the hook you know yeah <laughs> yeah classic Bait and switch, yeah, am I right? Yeah, seems like a pretty Damn. standard story to me. Where does the fantasy come into play here? <laughs> I didn't know this was fiction. Oh, no, it is fiction. I didn't know it was nonfiction. <laughs> um, but I knew. I knew right away. I, I knew Aww. that something was going to happen. And sure enough, um, it's revealed in the very first chapter that she's a ghoul. And she takes a bite out of Kaneki. 
And uh, yeah, he has, he's hopeless. I mean, there's, he's, he can't Pretty big chunk. fend for himself at all. Yeah, no. Yeah. He's in the shock. It's the motions of this girl I just met that thought was into me. She's not, which might even be worse than getting bit in the it's shoulder, to be honest. Right. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's like getting bit know. in the shoulder and in the heart. Yeah, no, time. exactly what happened. And, you know, she's just like, oh, you, oh I'm a ghoul. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. the classic villain monologue yeah. that she has. And Kaneki's just like, you really feel for him in that moment. Like, oh, he's going to die. Like, or something's gonna happen you have no idea i'll say for the entirety of the first volume i felt deeply for kaneki just because of the time that we got with him discovering these abilities but we'll talk more about that later yeah and then there's a moment where by luck by just chance she's he's she throws him into a wall that causes these rafters these beams Mm -hmm. that are just like left over from a construction site to fall and to crush her now that was pretty intense. That was intense. Her face of pure like horror. Mm-hmm. Because like you think like vampires that happens too when like they finally get killed or like are on the verge of death, they're like really like, holy shit, I never thought this could yeah. once happen to me. Like yeah. this yeah. is happening to me. I'm I'm actually gonna die. I've yeah. killed so many people, they were meaningless. Like this is my life. I never thought I would fucking yeah. bite the dust. Her final words were like, Why? Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean why? <laughs> You're a killer. Well, she's yeah been in a you know I guess somewhat immortal being. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the interesting thing is like ghouls are shown their final thoughts are always just very like pathetic. Yeah, yeah. It's not like oh, I had a good run. Yeah, yeah. What I really and this might seem like a small thing. What I really liked about this story is just these small choices that Ishida made that again might seem small, but to me just like change the whole context. And my enjoyment of the series, the first one being there's when Kaneki suffers that accident, him and Rize are rushed to the hospital and the doctor makes a judgment call. Maybe maybe monster esque judgment. Definitely call. monster esque. Definitely um, Frank and Fran. Yes. Call where he has to. You know, she was oh, yeah, pronounced like, dead. We're, oh, we're both AB positive. Did you know? That? <laughs> oh yeah, they had that little discussion. <laughs> oh no, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I do know that that's a more normal conversation than it would be out here. Yeah, because, it's because of the horoscope. That's like yeah, that's their horoscope. Yeah, but it, that is like out. If you don't know that, that 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 would feel like pretty cheap. Like, oh, did you know we're both the exact same rare bullet type? Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, just wanted to get that out there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it changes anything. Um. But the doctor makes a judgment call and chooses because she's pronounced dead on arrival. And so he basically makes a judgment call. I'm going to save this other kid, Kaneki, by doing an emergency organ transplant. Which seemed like a solid call. Yes, it seemed like a solid call. I liked that choice. But what I really liked was that we got to see the doctor have to deal with that choice Mm -hmm. for a while. Going to the 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 doctor conferences that yeah. they always have in Japan. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, we really didn't need that necessarily, but I like that we got because he's like, "Damn it, I'll take I'll take the consequences." And then you see him being like, "Well, yeah, like taking the consequences." Yeah, and I don't know if that's Ishida like overcompensating for maybe potentially like backlash. Maybe fans saying like that would never happen. Maybe that's him like just preparing for that mm. in a way, like just mm. putting it all out there. But um, I I thought it was really interesting to see him, you know, say like I stand by what I did. These are the reasons why I did it because I feel like a doctor would really have to defend his choice. Professional. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just not something you can do without getting the consent of that person's family, at the very least, you know, yeah, if you can't get the person's They consent. say something about, like, her fa- like they, she has no family or something. Like, there was a lot of, like, legal reasons where they're like, well, we don't have anyone to contact anyway. So yeah. this, you know, I mean, we got, some, this guy needs organs, this girl's dead, <laughs> yeah. she's got a bunch of organs. They're both AB positive. Yeah. Both it's both just matching po- up. Yeah. They had a lot in common, they liked reading books. Yeah, they were meant for each other, actually. <laughs> One died, one did... Oh, no, shit. Um, but yeah, he gets this emergency um, kidney, I think, transplant. Mm-hmm. I think it was a couple. Was I think it, it was just a couple. A no, it was, but just, well, I only say kidney because of something that happens later. And he specifically... Yeah, they, like yeah. he quotes, it was like, did yeah. he only need one kidney? Because you can survive without a kidney, right? Yeah, not well, but yeah. Well, yeah. But, you know, who's really surviving well? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Josh. Yeah. We're all just out here surviving. Uh, but... <laughs> He um, awakes in in a hospital bed and is immediately starting to realize something's not right. He doesn't know quite yet what, but he also doesn't really, I think, naturally starts to think, like, did that stuff even really happen? Yeah. Um, 
Because it's so insane. Yeah. And I liked that um, they're like, oh, he's not eating meals. And it's like, what's wrong? Is the food bad? And it's like cooked salmon and rice balls. I'm like, do you get oatmeal in the hospital? Yeah. Here? I was in, like, they get like a five course meal. In Japan, in their hospital, like food is like top notch. Really? Which makes fucking sense because you're sick and you need good food. Yeah, it is kind of fucked up. We get like apples and cinnamon. We get shit. We get ice chips. Is that what you got? Apples and cinnamon? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. It's a pretty solid hospital. (laughs) And like jello, which I don't know. Jello is a nutrition. Yeah, a lot of jello in hospitals. A lot of jello. A lot of jello. It's easy to get down, maybe, water based. You can get it down all you want, but like, am I going to be full on jello and be able to like recover? If you eat enough. If you eat enough jello. Yeah, you might. Yeah. Jello more like, hello, give me that jello. <laughs> okay. All right, moving right along. You doing okay, Meg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so the food looks delicious. It tastes like. Yeah, they fucking put garnish on it. Yeah. I'm like, man, I need to go to a Japanese hospital. Like, is this a <laughs> private hospital that you Just have? go there and just get hit by a car. I'll eat the best <laughs> I've ever eaten in my life. Yeah, you would do something like that. Uh, I absolutely Yeah, he would. <laughs> yeah, he would. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he's starting to realize that nothing's really tasting right. And he's having a weird reaction to it. Again, still not quite sure what's happening. But slowly, he starts to realize that uh, he, you know, he might be different because of having received mm-hmm. Rize's organs. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also um, led into, I think, by the way, I forgot to mention that while Hide and him were in the cafe at the beginning of the manga, we're also, you know, briefly introduced to Toka. Briefly. Um as someone who works there, Hide kind of hits on her a little bit. Um, but she seems just like someone who is just in the background. Even on the date with Rize, they pass her for a second. She kind of looks, but keeps moving. Yeah, so that whole scene with Hide and Kaneki in the like hospital mm-hmm. like didn't happen in the, in anime. the anime. In the anime, uh, you know, when he's like going through it, he's pretty much going through it alone. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't talk to Hida. He gets calls from other people. He doesn't answer them. Like the whole scene with him, you know, uh, eventually getting to his apartment and trying to do all these different things and they're not working out. That's like, that's the only part that you see. Like in the, in the manga, it's definitely more clear that he has more of like a support system mm-hmm. uh, because in the first episode, he's just going through it alone and it's like so sad and it's way more sad than him being like with Hide and he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. He's, he's just way more um, positive about the yeah. whole thing in the manga versus the anime. Right. It's like complete dread. Oh my God, my life is over. Like yeah. it's totally like that. I thought it was really nice how his friend was like, "I'm gonna take you to your favorite restaurant," and it, which was not. Yeah, you know, I thought that was it was like a, an American restaurant, which I always like yeah. seeing. However, that's which Western they have, style. They have a hamburger steak, which I don't think is a thing. I've had a hamburger steak before. It's what yeah. is it? Yeah. Is it a steak? Um, so you got two kinds of hamburger steaks, dude. You got a regular, just like hamburger patty that you put some gravy on, or you get you like um, um it's called. Yeah, we also call it not a Salisbury steak. Salisbury I've heard steak. of Salisbury steaks yeah. for sure. Yeah, from yeah. fucking Fallout. Yeah, huh? that's, that's exactly. That's have, you ever had a <laughs> Sal- <laughs> have you ever had a Salisbury steak before? Yeah. No, I mean, not in real life. My dad likes them. So good. In the they banquet, give you radiation. The banquet yeah. uh, freezer yeah. ones, yeah. Is that from Fallout? <laughs> You're asking if the game Fallout gives you radiation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're playing it, that makes a lot of things make sense. Um, okay. <laughs> I just said I played it too. Yeah, but you you're wearing an eye patch. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Stretchy. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, really Stretchy stretching it out. Mikey. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was a sweet moment too. Him taking to the him taking him to the diner, trying to reconnect with him. Like he really cares about him. It's not yeah, a it, shallow high school or college friendship. And he like he throws up after trying to eat, mm-hmm. which it was like. I mean, he did just get out of the hospital with a organ surgery that's like why maybe no one go yeah no one's like what's going on they're yeah. all like all right chill out man are you okay yeah, yeah. you need to like, take it at your own time and you know i mean he probably hasn't eaten at this point in like two days it's yeah just a like, long time bro how yeah, are you not like you just went on a date with a girl that you got along perfectly with you had the same blood type and then you know, like you both you know she died in that tragic girder accident that you guys were in <laughs> yeah yeah which nobody really dwells on her death um and which whether that was a ghoul or a real girl, which they don't know, by the way, that would have been traumatic for Kaneki. Um, either yeah. way, which yeah. is, that that that's yeah. what the why that the scene is nice is like 
hey, let's let's go get something to eat, buddy. You know, yeah. Maybe we'll we'll squeeze in talking about you die like your your dream girl dying next to you on your first date. And apparently, at like an abandoned construction yeah. site, you guys must have been doing something. Yeah. Funny. Well, yeah. Oh, how much of the anime did you watch? I saw like the first episode, and then like I skipped to like uh, the scene where he gets something happening. To him. Oh, okay, because like Rize. Like, she plays a huge part in the anime and not in the manga. Like, there's so many choices that he makes because of Rize in the anime because they're, like, you know, they're combined and now they're, like, yeah. souls intertwined and she's, like, his consciousness in the anime and you're, she, you get none of that, which I kind of prefer. <laughs> I prefer that they didn't do that in the manga yeah. way more. Yeah. Um, I did hear about them making that choice in the anime and I thought, why? I mean, it, it's just... It's way more meaningful. They really if, like the voice actor. Maybe it's way more mean, meaningful if Kaneki has to kind of deal with it on his own and yeah. like make his own choices no. instead of having to like hear this internal monologue from somebody. And she, they're acting like ghouls or like there's like a ghost, and it's like more magical than it is. Like no, ghouls are just things that eat other things. Like why are we making her on a higher platform than all the other ghouls? Like it's a very weird relationship that they have it's like he can't make decisions without her but maybe yeah. that's just i don't know why they chose to do that but. yeah i mean we do get to see later sort of you know how powerful she was and, that's, and sort of what she represented mm -hmm. in the community the ghoul community but right, that's was, all i needed she that's was all I like needed. Uh, uh, yeah she was like the alpha of that area yeah 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 so i was like oh good yeah the only thing she couldn't handle was falling girders which never <laughs> happens <laughs> never happens i can't stress enough there's never just loose girders but um but you gotta watch out for those she loved that construction site <laughs> yeah, more for her, girders huh? more like gert her g g got hurt her gert, gert her got got they got that her. was good yeah <laughs> okay now megan you are um while you're in while you're feeling down right now i do kind of want to kick you while you're down there um mm. uh, <laughs> wow <laughs> um this is a part of the of the manga that i really liked again because then i'm gonna get to i'm gonna get to why i mentioned what i mentioned earlier um we get to see kaneki sort of like lose his mind and we get him going through everything in his house and trying right. to eat literally anything to see if he can get some sort of flavor or stomach yeah. something. Yeah, reading that scene, I'm like, oh, did they just take this scene and put that in the Venom movie? It does kind of seem a little bit like that, right? I, I, I really think that they, they're like, no one's going to know. We could just do that. I think they do That's that with a couple the issue. movies. That's yeah, people the are issue. just stealing stuff be, from manga, dude. That's, we're going to see it more and more now I that bet, it's been yeah. being popular. Because it's like, if you were going to tell me which was an adaption of this, because like, that's not in Venom. So, yeah. Like, that's a pretty good adaption of that scene in Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah. Now that you say that, I can't unsee it. It does seem too similar to be coincidence. Yeah. Um, but I just love how we get to see, like, for pages, him just, like, taking everything out of his refrigerator, every combination of every dish. And he's like, I think at this point, he's either started to become aware of what he might have to do, but refusing is not an option for him. And it's not an option for him for a minute or two minutes. It's like the entirety of volume one, he's struggling with it. Yeah. And he's making no, um, he's not budging in his like moral compass at all. What he does find though, this is what I want to get to, Megan. He had, there's, you know, there's a scene of him when he's walking down the street and he starts seeing like, man, boy, girl, girl, boy, meat, 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 meat. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Yeah, and he starts seeing people as meat. Yeah. And then um, second of all, he realizes that there's one thing that doesn't taste bad to him. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so this is a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that one thing is coffee, which is, you know... Delicious. And see, that's what concerns me. Is it's like you... Um, this is like... Because you always drink a shit ton of coffee. Like a shit ton. So much so that you shake. And uncontrollably, if, when we go to get something to eat, you will eat scraps and then be like, I'll eat the rest later. Yeah, you do that a <laughs> lot, Megan. That is a legitimate way you live your life. Okay. We had coffee this morning before recording this episode. And then after um, you wanted to go get more coffee. So it's like you're always wanting coffee. You're like never really because finishing Because it your tastes food. good. And then you'll always talk about how hungry you are. We go somewhere to eat and you're like, I'll just have a fry. Which, this is all, like, not a joke. This is all real stuff. I don't know what you guys are accusing me of. And it's been, like, a joke and everything on the podcast. And I just want to be serious for a second. It's been, yeah. like, a joke that, like, 
you know, you're a cannibal, which was like all a joke because of how you like talked about eating meat in a previous episode. Uh-huh. Human meat, by the way. Which is human meat. Okay, I was addictive. describing the story right. about what would be the actual <laughs> ideals of the and of how the, they of, should be addicted to. No, it. I say in the ideals of the <laughs> world. That's what I was saying in general. See, but I just want to I just want to apologize for calling you a cannibal because you're a freaking ghoul, Megan. <laughs> you're a hundred percent a ghoul. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because you guys are gaslighting me. Gaslighting by um, pointing out things you've done. Okay, look. <laughs> I'm not going to admit anything. I'm not going to say that it's not true. But I just want to go on the record and say, I don't appreciate mm. <laughs> you see the way my she's... eating habits oh. mm-hmm. to be brought out to light. I mean, brought brought out brought on the podcast. Light. Right. Okay, and that's fair because... And people are allowed to like coffee. And people are allowed to not eat. But it's the amount of coffee. (laughs) Okay, well, I have a caffeine addiction. What do you want me to say? That's that's the only thing I can say. If in a future episode we get a couple Salisbury steaks and we all agree on the podcast to eat Uh them from start to finish on camera, would you eat the whole thing? And then we have to like keep recording for a while. Just so we can watch you digest. Yeah, I might it. need to take like a break in between. Oh. Yeah, I, um, right. See, it's always you always take breaks after we go to eat. Yeah. Well, I just need like a minute. Like my body's just like a little different. I don't know what you guys want me to say. Like I just thought it was an, an interesting. Yeah, me uh, too. That's it. And we don't have to stay here. It's not too a long. parallel. It's linear. Right. Adjacent. Maybe. <laughs> right. They all work. They're all directions. <laughs> Well, the direction that you guys are taking this is not the right one. I just want to say, look, and you guys will regret it. I just want to say it's it's nice to have. It's when it's when you say things like that. It's when you say things like that. And I just think it's nice that we have you know pre ghoul Kaneki here, and then we have post ghoul Kaneki here. And um, I think that's well, Kaneki's also us... human, right? That's the human pre, and you're the ghoul. But you know, hey, I think that what that's what gives uh-huh. us. Uh-huh, you know uh-huh. the credence to speak about this uh-huh. series is because you know it all. You know, you comment know, down below if you think it. that. <laughs> Go ahead. This is all blasphemous and all rumors. Okay, okay? and I just want to let the viewers know mm-hmm. that I'm not at all harmful, and, and I eat all my meals right. to completion. Right. Not in front of us. Not in front of you guys, mm-hmm. but I do eat them all the time, and I eat them regularly on a daily basis, like okay. regular people. And I drink a lot of coffee because it's delicious and it's good and it gives me energy. And mm. I don't want to be criticized for the my eating habits because I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just move on and, and we now, might, yeah. What direction we should go is back on track. You know, all this, all this talk about food is making me hungry. I okay? doubt it. <laughs> but let's get back on track. <laughs> and we'll come back to this later, Megan. I don't want you to think you got off, you know, got off scot-free. Um, plenty of Scots left. Plenty of Scots. You know, um, Scott more like, <laughs> more like stop. Sh- stop. More like please stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So that, yeah, he's like, oh, coffee is the is the cure. This is a miracle thing. And I was like, oh, is, is he the first person to discover this? And I like that as the story goes on, they're like, yeah, we all, <laughs> we yeah, all, yeah. They're like, Welcome we tried. Being a cool 101. Oh, we all went through the cycle of like, what can we eat or not? Yeah. Well, you would, yes. It, sure, mm-hmm. but he's the first half human one, so they were like already born knowing mm. what their mm. their preferences were, mm. and they were raised as such. Versus him, he had to figure all this shit out on his own. He had no one to teach yeah, him about anything. Yeah, he has to discover it yeah. Um, yeah. by himself. And, and imagine eating human food and then having to go to like not anymore. Well, Justin, I think that was a really cool way to to show it in the in the diner scene too, where he has to ask Hide like, this this is like cooked right. You know, and this is this is like, and you know, he is like, this is the best you know steak I've ever had, and he's like, well, it tastes like dirt to me. Mm-hmm. So that he has to, you know, even ask, and I think it's even more interesting. I think even I don't know if it's Rize who says it. It's not Rize. It's actually Toka who says it later. Like, tell me, like she's angry, and she's like, tell me what fucking cake tastes like, you know? Because apparently you humans love it so much, you know? Yeah, that 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 I have I have something to say about that scene, but yeah. Uh... Oh. Hmm. Okay. You don't like cake? Well, I mean, I mean, not that much, but like, mm. no, like, I don't know when, when the split work, but Rize is the other. So, yeah, there's Rize, and then I guess we should say, um, again, volume one, semi spoiler here, is that um, there's another ghoul who's very close to Kaneki, 
uh, who we meet after he sees who he saw at the convenience store buying coffee in an alley eating another human. He keeps attracting ghoul after ghoul mm-hmm. after ghoul all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, it, it's nonstop ghouls in this like area now. Yeah. Which I think is justified where it's like he never really looked for them. And the alpha just died. Yes. So and I think that's, that's, yeah. that's the story justification for them. They're, they're, they're running just, wild. Yeah. But if there were to be a little bit of a spoiler mark, it might maybe be, and again, it's not a huge spoiler, but it might maybe be that someone else is a ghoul. And we've already kind of let that cat out of the bag, but mm-hmm. I do still kind of want to hear a noise. Yeah. Um. Oh, fuck. Uh. Uh. Oh, uh, my eye. Oh, oh, what's happening? Oh, it's, it's, it's spoiler time. I liked it a lot. You, you, uh, yeah. you really pulled through it. You really you. brought it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank it you. It brought it. But, um. Yeah. Where he meets the other girl who's like, do you, don't, do you know what it's like to live your life in fear of being hunted all the time? It's like. You literally hunt people, and you eat them alive. What are you talking about? Do you, the, the, does he know what it's like to be? Yes, he does. You don't know what it's like to be. Well, I think the implication with her is that she's not like those other ghouls. That she doesn't actually hunt humans, I think. I don't yeah. know. Mm. But I think that's the implication, is that she, what we find out later. No, by she the was way, eating meat. Well, she was eating meat that was already killed. And she lent, she lent a hand there, huh? She really did lend a hand. She really some? did it, Linda. I like that part. Tukaniki. Oh, I need my hands. Oh, you should have got your hands. Ah. But um, we're talking about Toka, by the way. Toka is a ghoul. And we do find out, though, that she works for the uh, Antic. How do you say the name of the. Antifuku? Is Anti- that how you say Antifuku. Antifuku? Yeah, right. I think. Ah. Um, and they seem to be like nice ghouls, I guess. Like ghouls who are trying to be, you know. Twilight, Less monstrous, yeah. <laughs> Twilight type fools. Sure, that are yeah. Like, We're vegetarians, right? And they have like you know pre-killed, I guess, meat um, in a cooler, so they don't have to kill people. You know, they're trying to be ethical, ethical about it. I, I guess. I also do always like whenever a story like explains to me why, uh, like, oh, when you become this, you you eat human meat, and then I always like when they explain that, like, oh, uh, like they say, like, oh, their taste buds biologically they change. Yeah, so it's like they you. You could eat meat, but you're, you get nothing from it. You could eat human food, but you'll get nothing from it. Well, yeah, it's, I think it's something I even wrote down in prepping for this episode. Um, what was like the RC types or yeah, something that they go into? Exactly. And the Kagunes and the different kinds of uh, Kagune you can have. And yeah, stuff. and I like this story because it's not like overcomplicated. It is just like, oh, this person has this, this, this because of their biology and because of certain things in their body. It would make sense as to why, like, some uh, towards you find out later that, like, if, you know, ghouls can only eat two things, humans. Coffee, water, and other ghouls. And other ghouls, yeah. So then the other ghouls, uh, you can spot them right away if they do that because they're they look different because they're doing that. And it, it messes with their biology and the RCs and all the RC cells and it's really interesting. It's it, it's a cool power system that I wasn't like, okay, this is too much. I don't need to know all this information. Like yeah. they really let you know better, I think, in the manga than the Absolutely. Anime. Because RC types, Kagune, all of that is not really in volume one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, I would say, all about his uh, Kaneki's relationship with Hide, mo- for the most part. And then, like, you know, Kaneki's transformation. But um, it's at this part, too, that um, we see this this guy in the alley whose name is Nishiki Nishio. Yeah, and, glasses um, guy. Glasses guy. Maybe we got another oh, ghoul another on our hands. great character. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, and, you know, he starts roughing up Kaneki, telling him to get off his turf. This was his turf before Rize. Now that Rize has gone, it's his turf again. And, um, you know, basically Toka ends up uh, really begrudgingly saving Kaneki. Um, and then she sort of just like lays it all out that she doesn't really like him yeah. at all. Yeah. Because he looks to her for help. Like, like you're the only other person that I've met that doesn't seem like a monster. Like, help me. And she's like, no. <laughs> no you have my friend's organs in you. She was uh, yeah. supposed to eat you and we were going to go hang out afterwards. Well, they're yeah. not, they weren't friends. No, they weren't. Yeah, I don't think they were really friends, but they were like co-workers, I guess. Mm. Kind of. I don't know. You see more in her backstory as to why she is how she is. And I feel like in the manga, it's she's less mean. 
in the anime, she's like way more cold, like Sundere to the max. She's just not even Sundere, just like cold. Right. Like to Kaneki, to pretty much everyone, honestly, unless she's trying to help people for, you know, whatever. But mainly, it, I just felt like a different vibe from her for sure, which I did kind of prefer her in the manga versus yeah. the anime, even though I love Toka. She's she's one of the most badass characters, but yeah, it, it's weird. It's so weird that the differences and it's, it just sucks. Uh, it makes li- literally no sense to me. Um, for some other reasons that we'll go into, but yeah, and that's when we find out that that place she works at is sort of a safe house for ghouls. Yes, um, and that um, they take care of them and that they offer support for, as they say, weaker ghouls. Yoshimura is oh, the man. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, he gets a. Uh, a ghoul almost attacks his friend, right? Well, that's later, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's after he gets taken in? Uh, Well, it, it's when he gets taken in the first time and he gets given that packet of meat. Oh, right. Yeah. And then and then again, like, I love how, you know, he's, he's given that meat and he still will not eat it. Mm-hmm. I love how it's not this thing that he comes to accept quickly, even though it's, you know, drawing a lot of parallels with the story that he's reading, too. I think it's called the... The, the the egg of the goat. egg of the goat or something like that egg the, of the goat or the goat and the black egg or something like that or egg of the black goat something like that I, um have you guys ever tried goat meat no megan no but it sounds like it'd be the greatest <laughs> <laughs> i liked it and he's back i liked it and he's back um but again yeah we get like this again it feels it was like visceral moments of kaneki like tears coming out of his eyes like just like shoving things in his mouth like fighting with himself throwing stuff like just like it's not an option even though he has this like ethical way to eat human flesh like even though he knows that it's human he cannot bring himself and will not bring himself to do it no matter how bad it it gets um and so we're you know he gets to a point where you know he 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 tries to continue his life Mm -hmm. by coming to the conclusion that by the way, Hide's been pestering him, asking him, "Hey, you've been you've been, you know, out of English class, I think." Distant. And distant, and I have notes. If you want some notes, uh, I can come over and give them to you. And he's like, "Okay, I'll tell him I want the notes. He can come over just in case I'm too weak to call the ambulance because I'm going to myself cut these ghoul organs out of Woo! you." Um, and there's such good moments between him and Hide, and him realizing like I'm not going to be able to live this life anymore. Like, with him, like, how many times yeah. are we going to be able to walk together like this? Like, he, Yeah, he's also realizing, like, how good of a friend Hide is to him. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times people maybe can take friendships for granted, and he's forced to kind of look at it and appreciate everything that he's done for him. And he's also, like, it's also, like, recontextualizing a lot of things that Hide's done in the past for him because of how he's reacting to Kaneki's, you know, healing process Kaneki starts to question if the reason he even approached him in the first place was to sort of heal him and get him out of this bubble he was in. Yeah, it's so sad because he just like his best friend he can't tell his issue with. Yeah. Like, oh, anything else I could have told you, bro, like we could have worked it out. But like, this is the one thing that I can't discuss with you because yeah. it is not in your world. Yeah. There's even a panel of them walking together and he realizes if I ever told him, would I ever be able to walk beside him like this again? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know. It hits. It works. Yeah. That's why he says, I'll just cut my kidney out because he's like, they could just give me another kidney. Yeah. He yeah. give me a guy, uh, you know, just a normal guy kidney. Yeah. And it's like, and if they don't, then it's better than this. Kind I of. Mean, uh-huh. yeah, then, I mean, it's. Uh, this I mean, he's torturing himself. And at this point, I mean, I think Toka says it at one point, like, don't try to do that shit because it is hell. Yeah. Don't don't go too long without eating. And then, yeah. of course, when he tries to stab himself, the knife just bends and he can't even pierce his own skin. So he's just wow. like trapped and he's struggling, of course, with like really at this point too, not belonging in either world, not belonging in the ghoul world and not belonging in the human world. But he goes back to school and, um, you know, meets Hide. Hide introduces him to some new friends that he's had that are on this like festival committee. They go to talk to this other guy about getting some footage of the previous festival to plan for the new one. And that person is the person we saw in the alley in the convenience store with the coffee. That is Nishiko mm-hmm. Nishio. Um, who's like fucking a girl? He's a real in. player. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that, that that's the glasses ghoul. Yeah. yeah, and he specifically made like, well, how would you feel if someone walked if if someone was having sex with was naked with your girlfriend? Would you be like, oh, okay, it's probably misunderstanding. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he, the guy's like, oh, 
I guess he's worried about that in his personal life. <laughs> yeah, he's like, or he's like, oh, good point, actually. <laughs> way to, way to explain that. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's uh, a little bit of there's a little bit of something between the two of them. Kaneki's not really sure why, you know, he's he's tr- trying to blend in. Mm-hmm. Nishio's trying to blend in and he's a little skeptical. This person's obviously deceiving everybody in his life. But then Hide has to go to his house to get something. Kaneki's like, absolutely not. Uh-huh. Um, so he's like, can I go? I feel good. I need to get out of the house. And sure enough, good thing he did go with him because Nishio l- tried to lead Hide down this alley and just starts beating the shit out of it. Beating the utter shit out of yeah. him. Um, and again, this is where Kaneki's helpless, defenseless, can't, you know, do really anything. Um, but they start having this this dialogue and you're really let into like, you know, how ghouls see humans mm-hmm. as livestock. And it's the classic sort of like, would you bat an eye if if, you know, I ate a pig, why would why are you batting an eye if I eat a yeah. human? Those are always like semi good points, but it's always like, well, I mean, you can't have this conversation with a pig. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's always like, what well, you eat lives too. It's like, yeah, but I'm not debating eating a, right. with the thing I'm eating right yeah. now. It's yeah. not going like like if a if a pig started going like what you think it's okay to eat me, I'd be like, uh-huh. well, God, no. Absolutely not. No, Holy shit, how long have okay? you been able to do this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like the hands on the hips with the hooves, and he's like, do yeah. you think it's okay? So you think it's okay to eat us, but what, we can't eat you? And it's like, if we're at a level of having this conversation, then no, it's not okay. Yeah. Pigs have been known to eat people. De- Is that well, true? I mean, they'll eat anything. Yeah. yeah, they'll eat anything. So sometimes people will like, like that's like a way to dispose of a body. You feed feed them like a pigs? bunch of pigs. Yeah, feed them yeah. to my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Got him, dude. I liked it. Um... <laughs> But Way yeah. to ham it up, Cody. Oh, and she's back too. Everybody's here. The gang's all here. Yes. Um, so yeah, and it's at this point too where we're really shown Kaneki's struggle, his relationship, his confusion, his just like all of his emotions come to a head in this in this moment. And it's done really well because like he I love the fact that he's just like not full ghoul, not full human. I love the fact that he's like wrestling with not feeling like he belongs. I mean, you know, it it might be a flimsy comparison, but like as someone being like half white, half Mexican, like I was really able to grasp onto that because I think someone no, tells I, I him. I love halfy characters. Me too. Like, I mean, I wonder why, but like to me, it was like, I think even someone in this story says like, he's like, I'm half ghoul, I'm half human. And then I think it was maybe the 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 the, the club owner, the cafe owner, was like, "No, oh, yeah, you're, you're ghoul and human. Like mm-hmm. you're both. You can walk both worlds. Like we can't do that." And to me, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, that's something that I heard very late in life. That you know, to stop referring to myself as half of a human and half of a another human, I'm I'm both of those things. And so, like the way it was handled in this series, I think was beautifully done, and it was very easy for me to as someone who has struggled with that to connect with that character in that way. And so that's another reason why I, I, I fell in love with this. Um, and it all came to an emotional head. And, and I believed Kaneki's like fear for his friend. And I believed that he would do anything to save him with all these flashbacks of their friendship and how, again, he's realizing what Hide was really doing for him mm-hmm. and how he's not willing to let that go and how he finally wants to stand up and fight for those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, he enters... Yes. Rage mode. Rage mode. He's the one-eyed ghoul. The one-eyed ghoul and his Kagune, I think, comes out, right? Uh-huh. Um, and they don't really go into ex- explaining what Kagune is yet. No. But um, I think he uses the word Kanage. Or, or at least Kagune. Nishiki does use Yeah, because they all have different ones, and depending on which one, they come from different parts of your body and stuff. So that's also really cool. They don't have all the same one. Yeah, I like that. Different that, abilities. That and Yeah, super dope. So. That one's stronger. That one has more flexibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to play that, play Revenant? It's a Dark Souls-like game, but it's like super anime, and you it's just Tokyo Ghoul powers. Really? <laughs> it's its just, it's like so blatantly that. Wow. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I like, I mean, it makes for good fight fight scenes and yeah. you know, a good power system, I think. It's simple, but it's also like effective yeah, I think, in a lot of ways. Uh, he has the most like average one. 
Uh, um, I wouldn't say that. No, his is actually uh, yeah, pretty a, powerful. A duo, yeah. a duo uh, lip smack is never good. Whenever <laughs> if I say it right, and yeah, they go. Actually, well, uh, the hardest one to use is pretty much. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't think he has that one. Well, Someone there's else Ukaku, has the... Kokaku, Rin Kaku, and Bikaku, and and Kaneki is Rin has a Rin Kaku. Yeah, uh, Kagune, and they're more like uh, like scales. They're more like um, mm. like a scale. Like uh, Rize's is more like wings. And then, um, what was he? What did he have? The guy with the glasses again? I'm not a hundred percent. I don't think sure. he used his. I, I think don't he think died. he did. He, it looked like he partially. Oh, is the tail is yeah, the one at uh, the lowest one, which is the buy. Yeah. Um, and he the tail is pretty cool, but I did like when you know he went full ghoul and he's beating the shit out of him, and even the anime I laughed at this part when he's just lifting him up in the air and he's just like, oh shine 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 shine, and yeah, he's just like yeah. fucking bleeding everywhere. He's like, stop! Yeah. I'm gonna die! Stop! Yeah. yeah. I'm actually gonna yeah. Die. Which is back right, to your point too. It's so <laughs> funny how in those last moments, this like high he was on his high horse the whole uh-huh. the whole volume, and now he's like kind of pathetic. Yeah, he's like, you're gonna kill me! <laughs> Don't you realize what? Yeah. Why why me? And it's it, it is uh it's a nice little thing of like oh like for all their high and mighty talk they they die uh pathetically mm-hmm. but i will say that like again it's been done before but i really believed that um i keep forgetting his name so i have to keep looking down uh nishio or nishiki oh. i really believed that he did not know why um that he did not know why kaneki was like fighting for this human so much like it, he didn't have this like classic villain monologue where he's like humans are livestock to us. <laughs> he did say those things, but it also felt like he's like, that's just like how it is. It's, it's his not life. Like, like yeah, he, it's that's how he. That's all he knows. Like you could be like, okay, I want to be like the people in the cafe, but it's like it's just easier to kill. Him. <laughs> well, I don't even think easier. He's like, I. There's just that's just how it is. There's no choice. I like physically my body. I can't do anything else. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just believed that he needed to do it, and I felt like he he was like. He was angry because he was confused as to why, like, Kaneki cared so much. He'd never come across anybody like that before. And, yeah, villains tend to have those moments where they're explaining themselves. But, like, most most of the time it's because they might feel like they're better than other people. And maybe ghouls feel like they're better than humans. But it also felt like, hey, man, well, you never he's trying have to, a choice. You he's trying to teach him a lesson. Yeah. You never think you're on par with something you refer to as livestock. True. That's a very good point. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you, yeah. He becomes, I mean, later on in the series, you see him more, and it, it makes sense, like, exactly what you're saying. He's just, like, you know, I mean, harsh learning. He used to be like, you gotta fucking man up and deal with your shit. Like, you're yeah. gonna, dude, you haven't eaten yet? You're fucking can't even control your eye? Like, you're a baby. It's yeah. also funny to do that and then get the shit kicked out of you by the guy you <laughs> yeah. were belittling. Yeah. Just yeah. being like, you're a little baby. Did you know that? Oh, okay, stop. Come on, come on. What are you're you gonna doing? kill me. You're gonna kill me. Snish, 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 snish. Um, and then Toka comes to the rescue again because um, Kaneki still hasn't ate. Toka, at a certain point, I think, even tries to shove uh-huh. me um, in his throat. And he's like, you know, trying to fucking get it out of it's him. It's good. You like it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's at a point now. Also, I thought it was really a, a really nice touch how he's kind of studying on his way to this alley. Nishiki, like he's watching him eat. And he's like, how is he doing that? Like, how is he eating? How is he like blending in this well? I just like that he's also like trying. Now he's like trying to figure it out on his own by like just looking to other ghouls yeah. to figure out what to do. I mean, he's obviously a very analytical person. Yeah. So just like him thrown in this world, like, of course, you're going to want to know more about it. Like, you know, nothing yeah. and you got to there's not a book about it yeah. <laughs> for you to read. So you just have to go out and do your yeah. own research on research in, in a bad way. Yeah. In the field. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, she shows up because Kaneki has an eight and he, you know, he starts to lose his mind, similar to how like a vampire gets around blood. Uh-huh. He, he just he, He's just gone. And now the, the ghoul is at the forefront of his consciousness. And he, you know, is about to eat Hide. And, the, you know, that gets stopped from happening. And uh, he wakes up in the um, in, in the I, I can't pronounce Antefki that. and Antifiku. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He wakes up <laughs> there and is told kind of what happened and, and that, you know, he's going to be looked after and. Um, he days there too. They do that nice little dragging. You know, what about my friend? Your friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> down the hall. Down the hall. But be careful. And then he and then he's like, oh, he's sleeping. Yeah. Be careful because the floors are we just clean them. <laughs> what is that voice? <laughs> I like be it a lot. careful. You do be careful, my child. He does sound like he would talk like that. Yeah, yeah. he's the best. Oh, he's yeah. one of my favorite characters in the whole series. He seems like a really he, likable character. He's really awesome, and you know, he has that line where he's like, "I like." I, I think is it in, 
I don't know. He just says he likes Uh-oh. humans. I don't know. You can't stop yourself. I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I just I just consume too much, and it's all right. jumbled in my brain. You put a marker down and be like, anything after this point. Don't make me get my Kagugane out right now. Right? Look, I was, oh. ju- I was just, I was talking to Josh what? first of all. <laughs> yeah. You were pointing at me. Well, I, well, I can't point. He's got big fingers. He got big fingers. <laughs> you know what they say? Small hands, <laughs> but big fingers. That's uh, well. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's pretty much the end of the, of the first volume, too. Um, but there is this little panel where, and again, I know Megan knows more than I do, but there is this little panel where it does look like Hide is kind of awake, and he's kind of looking away. So, um, Which I'm, is the, the move to do when you wake up in a strange house to be yeah. like, yeah, yeah, no shit. Pretend to be asleep for a little while longer, gather info. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Been there. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait to hear them be oh, like, no. <laughs> yeah. where they're talking about, I'm going to tell him that he's going to be in this room, but I'm going to do it real spooky like so he thinks he's dead for a bit. Yeah, yeah I love that when they have so he's passed out. Let's just talk about all the secrets we need to talk yeah. about in the yeah. same room. Yeah. It's like you fu- <laughs> Let's talk about the one thing he can never find out. <laughs> the right? one thing he can never know. Well, let's talk about maybe two steps away from him because yeah. he's dead asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Time is of the up. essence and from what I've heard, he seems like quite the heavy sleeper. <laughs> this is perfect. We can talk about our plan. I don't want yeah. to walk into another room. God, we're man. already here. As yeah. I said previously, we have just cleaned these floors <laughs> to retread them and dirty would them again. Would be a again. disgrace. Would be a disgrace to this house. To all of ghoul kind. <laughs> I mean, no, would I'll you, say what I need to yeah. say, ghoul kind. Hypothetically. Kodak, he's like, just, we'll just talk about it later. Then he's like, as I said, time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. <laughs> you are but a novice. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. You are a ghoul. <laughs> Okay. I'm a ghoul. We're all ghouls here. <laughs> Everyone knows it. <laughs> Let's just get that Don't out Don't look there. at your friend. Look at me. Stop looking at him. He's asleep. <laughs> Don't look at him. Look at me. Yeah. Don't look at him. Look at me. Use your ghoul Don't look eye at when him. you look, look at me. Look at me. Use your ghoul eye, your black and red eye. Yeah. Take the eye patch off. We all look know you're me. a ghoul. Yeah. Don't bother hiding it. <laughs> look at me. And then he sees the blanket rustle. He's just dreaming, okay? Oh, so no one rust- rustles <laughs> around in their sleep? Is no that- one dreams. <laughs> no Do one. Have you not dreamt a dream in your life? Did you dream that you weren't a ghoul? <laughs> yeah, they really I th- did. I thought that that scene was a little too uh, yeah. like the writing kind of took a weird just dive. for a sec, just for a, just for a sec, <laughs> just for a bit, just for a bit. Oh god! Um, but overall, I thought it was fantastic. You're a ghoul head now. I'm a ghoul guy. I gotta okay? watch the first I go season. ghoul ghoul gaga over oh, the series. Well, I would I'm, say. I would suggest watch the first season and then read the manga because if you read the manga and then watch the first season, it won't be the same. Well, the first season is going to be of the anime is going to be ass if I read the manga, right? Exactly. That's I mean, I'm... not ass, but it's not going to be as good. That's so I'd I'm... rather read the manga. But it's Go such ahead, a Cole. good. It's a good. It's a good anime if you just watch it on its own. That's what I was worried about because everyone said like, <sighs> sorry, I was holding my breath. How does oh, that oh. <laughs> I was it, video only. Every time I stopped talking, I paused. Uh, I was a little, a little, little, little Easter egg. Little, <laughs> <laughs> little Easter egg into volume one lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Write it down, yeah. guys. Uh, I also held my breath, which added nothing to anyone except. <laughs> right. But now, uh, but people, I knew I was doing. Well, it. now people can go back in previous episodes and know that you're holding your breath, <laughs> holding your breath the whole time before you talk. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, oh uh fuck. Uh, what was, <laughs> uh, what were we talking that, that, Because everyone was like, oh, okay, well, the anime did the manga such a disservice. I really want to, like, see more of this story, but mm-hmm. it's like, well, if I'm, I know going in, if I watch the anime, I'm getting a lesser version of it. I wouldn't say lesser. I mean, I've only read the first volume, but from the first volume, like, the art is, you know, different. The feel is kind of different. The anime kind of feels like it's trying to be, you know, like, edgy i mean this mm. feels more realistic in the world versus like it feels from what i've seen it feels a little more light-hearted although definitely it gets, it gets very real in the manga. definitely very there few a, uh, animes get darker than the mangas yeah, yeah no yeah the anime definitely just makes it like okay gritty like ghouls blah blah and like i said he is a big part of that and that's why in route a you know people are kind of like this isn't canon like they're whatever but uh i mean if you like the anime you know, read the manga if you like the story, if you like the characters, but I wouldn't say don't watch the anime at all. I mean, just just try Look, it I, out. It's just I, different. Sure, but I mean, I mean that's not <laughs> that's okay. <a> great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just try it out. Give it a chance. Sure, but what? <laughs> but I mean, it's not like it's not what it's at least from what I understand, it's not Ishida's vision. It's not the guy's, mm. the creator of this series. 
Like he wrote the story that he wanted to tell, and yeah. they and they he told a very a, and he did a job. very good job, and they told a different story or that, a different version of that story. That's more of Root A's issue. Sure, uh, and I know from what I've heard, season one doesn't stray too far. Maybe in the first half, it's mm-hmm. a little more faithful, and that it you know sort of yeah. goes its own way in the second half. Totally. But when is that ever? Like I don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't. First of all, I don't really want to reward that. Um, I, I wouldn't say rewarding it. It's just, I mean, it's 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 very beautiful. I mean, the anime is very beautiful. The animation's awesome. The music is amazing. Well, uh, you know, best OP, best ED. We could talk about it all day. Um, but I just think, I, I mean, just for more context, I do like that I read this because it is like a different feeling. It's not as different as like Doro Hidoro. I wouldn't say it's that. I mean different with like the feeling but it is definitely more lighthearted in the manga versus the anime the anime feels, just feels like this is a scary horror mon- uh, anime i will say and again because i've never really gone all the way in on tokyo ghoul i've just kind of been around been around it from what i've seen i went into this manga kind of thinking i knew what to expect and i was completely wrong I was and it's be- much more impressed with this than I thought I was going Absolutely. To. And it's because of all the shit I see from the anime, really. Yeah. Like, it's from all this, like, gritty sort mm-hmm. of, you know. And I know the manga will get to a place where, you know, Kaneki will sort of have his, like, more iconic look that's on all these posters and shirts and everything. But, you know, I, I just think I've, in my mind, been sold this completely different story than what I got. And I liked what I got. The reason I stayed away for it so long was because of sort of the anime i even you know a a while ago watched the first two episodes and was like yeah i don't really know which was why again like i thought i knew what i was getting into yeah so i I would say that like look and again like i do want to kind of get into that a little bit because like you know full metal alchemist has done it they had their reason for doing it their reason was the anime caught up to the manga and then they just had to kind of make it up after that which i guess if there is any reason that would be a reason that's a valid one. Yeah. But then you look at things like The Promised Neverland 2 that just like does whatever the fuck it wants to do for no reason whatsoever. Like Cody said, you have like literal storyboards and a fan base that already loves this source material. Why change it? And number two, like especially after connecting with Ishida and reading that afterward mm-hmm. and about how like physically demanding it was for him to go through that and how much it weighed on his psyche and how it he says it weighed on his like physical body. He lost his appetite. He started, you know, suffering from ailments. Yeah. And then for some other studio to be like, yeah, but we're going to change it. Yeah. Like, and they can't I, even really like complain just because they want their source material to be, you know, put out there. And like, obviously, the anime brought huge more, uh, you know, audiences in it. And, huge and, and, more. <laughs> huge more. Get that on the shirt. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Megan. You were on a good train of thought. Go ahead. You left off at huge a more. Lot of- <laughs> <laughs> it brought a lot of uh new people that were uh willing to read the manga and sales for him but at the same time like oh, that happens a lot there where studios do whatever they want and then the manga cuz just like oh i can't complain though it's it's uh, it's my thing and but, i should be thankful cuz then they'll get backlash for mm-hmm. complaining but how many more people would have stayed how much better would you know whatever re ended up being have been if they stuck to the source material like that's another thing i wanted to mention too like sure maybe maybe on one hand because i mean i care about ishida more than i care about myself obviously like that's his story to tell like and i get that they're grateful that that sure maybe their story is getting more eyes but it's not really their story and yeah tokyo ghoul is huge and it has a huge fan base but like how much bigger could that have been if it was faithful and i just think that like you know you have so many people who have these huge series like you know the my hero anime is huge and you know the promise neverland season one was huge i mean there's so many things that and hopefully chainsaw man is too attack on titan is huge and they for the most part stick to the source material they make choices here and there but like i just don't think it's fair it is interesting how like uh even when a like an anime is like oh wow they made so many changes that you like you compare that to what comic books will get and it is still like wild that like that uh that difference in like even if they're like we're gonna change this completely you're still like well that was kind of still that same story yeah and comic books will like the like reference of like a 30 year plot line with like a guy being like yeah, yeah. anyway i mm. and how do they like how do they choose like how do they choose 
you know, I'm just looking at manga that's on the shelf right now, but like Fire Force too. Like, how do they how do they choose like, oh, this story we're gonna stick to? I know it's studio to studio, directors, writers, you know, a lot of that, but like I I don't know. I, I just even from a business standpoint, it's never really worked. Why do you think you're gonna be the one studio to to make it all good? I mean Yeah. I I just like it just doesn't make sense to me. And I just feel like and again, this is coming from me because I was sort of turned off from what I saw and I'm upset because had I been given what I read, I would have been hooked on this series a long time ago. Yeah, I was thinking of like what ex- times does that work better? Like the only t- things I can think of were in video games where like there's been a couple times where the creators will be like, I wish I did that. Like uh in video game sure. adaptions. That's the only time Well, let's I've just go that. to Invincible for a second and how you know, you were saying that Mark Miller, one of his biggest regrets was not um, introducing a certain scene earlier. And so when it gets adapted into a TV show, they were sure to put that earlier than they did in the comic book. Right. So there are things you can go back and fix. But even with that, there's things that were changed. But it does feel like at least the writer had some say in it. There was a, a really that cyberpunk game was badly made, but the story was really good. But there's a gang because it's based on a tabletop game. And they had a gang called the Voodoo Boys, which was just a multinational, like, that's just a group of people calling themselves the Voodoo. The game turned them into, like, a, a group of hackers from Africa who mostly use hacking to, like, it looks mm, like magic. I remember you showing me that, yeah. So the creator was like, yeah, I, I should have done that. I mean, yeah, I guess sometimes it can work, and maybe that's the risk um, that you take. But I think it just, I think it works in video games and it, and it works. That's in... the only instance I can think of that happening though. Like, yeah, it does not I, happen in I, stories. I can't much. really think of a manga. I mean, Megan or an anime. I mean, you've seen, I think more anime than I have, like that it's worked. I mean, that it's worked more than the manga. I, I just, I can't. Yeah. I ha- I can't think of anything where the, where the writer of a manga would be like, ah, oh, why didn't I do that when I was drawing that for the course of like a month in my room? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. it doesn't necessarily. <laughs> and like, like I said, they can't really, they can't complain because it then makes look the, it, may, it looks, it, oh, oh, it makes how, them look bad. What do you how mean unprofessional by that, to criticize the the, work, the studio that you're that works yeah. with you. That's yeah, so exactly. like they're almost ungrateful. That's unprofessional. It's unprofessional. It's unprofessional. It's looked down upon if you're like they're taking the time, you know, animators and all this stuff and OSTs and all these people doing all this work for you to be like, you know, they offered you an anime, which is like, you know, the highest reward you could get as a manga cut and for you to be like i didn't like this still obviously you could say that because you're the creator of it yeah. but you know here people don't give a fuck i created this book i'm gonna say that this was bad blah 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 like you can do that here but i don't know for some reason for the anime industry manga industry is just looked down upon like super bad yeah cody the uh, the writer of john dies at the end i told i I told you about this, but it, it's like relevant. Is like the uh, the movie cuts out two thirds of the plot line. It doesn't include the big ending that it's all the story is all building up to. I think it's a great movie, but like the book is like wow, wow. They really just didn't adapt that. And the author talks about it where he's just like, "There's people who sell way more books than me, and who've been around for decades longer than me, who will never get anything adapted in their lifetime." So like, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Like the director really put all he had into it, so it's like it. I don't. I'm not like mad about it happening, and it's like it, in the perfect world of an adaption, I would need all this money and resources. And again, I'm lucky that this got any adaption at all, because people, mm. you know, will never get that. Even like people more successful than me will never get that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and and there are still a lot of fans, a lot of manga fans too. And you know, I'm sure on one hand that you know maybe people did go to the anime and then want more and go to the manga and then realize that the manga maybe was better and they wouldn't have done that without the anime. And, you know, I, I, I guess why I just, you know, got, you know, got so, you know, passionate about it was just after oh, reading by the, that I afterwards. agree with you, but no, yeah, I, I'm no, just yeah. trying to think of examples. No, I know, it's a double-edged Kagane. Oh. <laughs> all right, yeah, we can, all right. All right I'll keep good. that one in, yeah. yeah. Oh. No, I mean, end the episode. Oh, end it. It was that good. Yeah. I oh, think okay. so. <laughs> <laughs> But um, again, read that afterward if you haven't read it, just because of, of, you know, really kind of how it goes into, you know, him isolating himself and him cutting himself off from family and friends mm-hmm. and like what it took for him to get there. And Yeah, that's wild to then be like, oh, I, you know, we thought we'd do something else. Be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for it to be culturally, you know, disrespectful to, to, to say anything, it's kind of like, you know, say what you'll say about, you know, Americans or Westerners or whatever. But I, I you know, what? 
they have a, a job in a, it's like an unofficial thing in Japan and China called the uh, the pro- the professional American mm. because in American culture it's not taboo to like tell your boss that's a dumb idea right but because it's so taboo in those cultures they will hire Americans specifically to be like you shouldn't do that boss that's a bad idea is that real that's real yeah. wow that's crazy because it is like they're all just like you you and also like it in, in our culture it doesn't matter as much if a boss yells at you. Yeah, it, it's more of like I could leave. <laughs> yeah, and uh, look, our culture does a lo- gets a lot of things wrong. Okay? Oh, most uh, deaf. most deaf. yeah. Don't even uh, get for sure. started on the workforce. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh. I do think like um, you know standing up for like <laughs> your own work is um, because again, it's as your someone, art. It's your art, and, and and trust me, as someone who you know um, considers himself to be a creative person, like I totally understand that. When I feel like I'm given an opportunity, I feel like it's disrespectful to not Mm -hmm. take that opportunity because, you know, uh, A, that opportunity might never come around again. Mm -hmm. And and B, like you're being given something. It's Mm -hmm. it's the polite thing to 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 take it in stride. Yeah. To the to more to the John does at the end thing. Yeah. Like after that movie, never got any sequels. He wrote three more books. Nothing ever got adapted ever again. That was his one shot at getting anything adapted. Wow. So, I mean, he went on to write much more successful, more well-received books. Yeah, it's crazy. Stars just aren't going to align for that series. And it is just wild, too, that they rarely do. And so when they do, for that to happen, it, it's, you it, know. Yeah, it, yeah, people will, authors will be like, that was garbage. That's what the Witcher uh, author, mm. he hated the video games. Really? Yeah. Does he like uh, the show? Uh, I don't know. He hates every thing seems like an alan moore kind of guy like they offered like a like an insanely fair like payment system he's like i don't care just give me an upfront payment and i'll like and then he like sued for more rights like when the games became popular he's actually like kind of like a scumbag it's a real george oh, lucas huh kind of a little bit well sure. george george lucas he, he's another whole nother that's a whole nother ball game yeah, george pukes episode uh, george pukes more like it like it um, I mean, he's Gorge he, Pucus. <laughs> Gorge Pucus, yeah. yeah. You know, he's done. Yeah. He's done. En- he's done enough. He, he gave us, you know, something great. But he gave us something great, but then he just turned into, uh, you know, a real Darth Vader. A little bit. He became what he set out to fight. What he set out to to force. Yeah, which is kind of true because he did. You know, he hated um, big production companies, and his has become one of you know Lucas. Um, films has become mm-hmm. so big. Well, now Disney owns that. Disney owns that. And now it is owned by the biggest <laughs> and corporation. And he hates that. He hates yeah. that every day. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of obviously behind saw the scenes a, stuff a and stuff that was, we don't know. But. Where he was just like, I mean, why would I keep making these movies when everyone just gets mad at me and tells me I like I'm awful? Like, why would when people are like, why do you sell drugs? Like, because you hate me. Yeah. It was actually kind of sad where he's like, every anything I do, people will just compare it to the older stuff. They won't be happy. Why yeah. not just like, make and, money and retire? And there is a lot of nuance to it. And I know it's it's not really ever fair to be, you know, black and white about it because there are, like I said, a lot of things that go on that, you know, even we're not aware of. Yeah, that we don't hear about. But yeah, I mean, it's just wild to me. And again, another reason why I feel so passionate about it is because I really did love this manga. I absolutely loved it. Yay! And I and I think um, you know, I'm it's just, you know, you should just two for two right now. Chojin X was such a great read. And Having to wait week for week, uh, week to week to get a new chapter was yeah. something I was not like excited about. But now I have something to go back to that's out. There's, you know, I, in, in Tokyo Ghoul, there's 14 volumes. So I got 14 volumes of that to binge. Plus, if I really want to, a lot of other stuff, too. Um, I absolutely loved it, everything about it. I'm so excited to keep specifically reading it. Um, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way or have any other final thoughts about the series or the first volume. Um, hmm. Ooh. I'm just kidding. No. Uh, you know, as a Tokyo Ghoul fan, I do think I should do my justice and read the manga fully because I've, so- I've consumed so much of it and it was like such a big part of, you know, me watching more anime and, and and just like the love for all the characters and stuff so like there's no reason why i wouldn't keep reading it i know i just have a lot of things to watch and it's always things to watch things to read but i really did have a different feeling about the manga than the anime like the manga just made me feel more for kaneki and in the anime is kind of shown as more of like a crybaby in the beginning and then later on but there was a huge twist that i had no idea that happens at the end of season one and going into route a that like 
it's they just pulled that shit out of their ass and it could it it literally changed the whole story so i only know that version and i would love to see the other version because i know like different things happen along the way and relationships and stuff like that so i I mean i mean i i will i probably complete it at some point i mean not like okay i need to read this i need to stop everything and read this right now just because i've consumed so much um because i'm a bit full (laughs) uh first time for everything huh uh, but yeah, I did enjoy it. I did like it, and I'm glad that you finally read it yeah, and, me and too. consumed it me and too. Uh, drank the blood. Drank the blood, Cody. What'd you think? They, ate the, like, they don't drink. Well, they yeah, eat the flesh. Ate the flesh they yeah. eat flesh and drink blood. They, they drink blood. Well, I mean, when you eat flesh, when you, you eat gotta flesh, drink you got to drink blood. I, I mean, yeah, sure, but when you eat fruit, you don't say I also drink water. It's not. Well, I it'd mean, be f- it'd be the nectar. Well, it's like if you eat a medium rare steak, the you blood know, you're would be the blood. nectar. Yeah. She, you she eat it. <laughs> oh, she's blood. calling blood nectar. No, now. because you can't eat the you can't eat the body without drinking some blood because you're chomping and you're the you're it's, it's a lot of blood. It, yeah, and you would know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. People either. have a lot of blood. <laughs> okay, Cody, what do you think of it? Um, I would probably what I'm going to do. I'm gonna read the manga and then watch the anime, and then anytime there's a thing that I don't like, I'll just be like, well. <laughs> yeah. That's not what happened, and then so I was like, okay, but because I really want to just see the fight scenes animated. Yeah. So yeah. if they make story choices that are worse in the manga, I'm like, well, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one else knows. Yeah, I know that's not what happened. <laughs> yeah, but I got to see this cool fight. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, you, I get to see at some point explain to me why he goes like this all the time. Yeah, we didn't even get that. Oh uh, yeah, I'm excited for you guys. Me too. To keep I'm so reading. excited because there's. Uh-huh. I mean, of course they changed a lot of things, but you know. But I, I, at its small core, I guess the animates it. Well, I'm sure they'll cover it in the manga. Yeah, of course. What the <laughs> fuck? You guys are treating me. I'm not. I'm just saying this is how I experienced no, it I first. No, I I'm just. I'm and just, it's yeah. it's just it's a different joshing. experience for me. Just joshing you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry. Be careful. That's all I have to say. Watch your fucking back. That's a good and your shoulder. Oh my god. Um, anyway, you um, thank you Me. for I was just watching agreeing with you the whole time and listening to another episode. Um, I think it goes without saying that we all highly recommend Tokyo Ghoul. Let us know um, what you think about uh, <laughs> the series. Why are you pointing at me? I, I didn't like the way you went. I think it goes without saying. <laughs> I like doing this and I like you guys for watching and listening. And if you've read the manga and watched the anime or only watched the anime and haven't read the manga, let us know what you think either way about either one um, because it is there's a lot of debate around the ad- adaptations. And so, yeah, let us know what you think, what you prefer, and how you choose to continue to consume it if you do. And if you do decide to read it because of this video, let us know that too, which you could do in our Discord, um, which there will be a link for down below, or by you know following us on Instagram, shooting us a, a DM over there. Um, but that's going to do it for the review portion of the episode. The only thing left to do before getting out of here is to get to the Wonder Circle, which is the section of the episode where we read some comments from you that have been left on previous videos and discuss them. Um, we'll have Volume One Chan go through and pick a few. So if you don't mind, Volume One Chan, can you read uh, the first comment to us, please? This one comes from Megan Perrine. What the heck? Last mention, shout out to my dad, Frank Perrine, for making my Ebisu mask and sights. He's the best. Heart emoji, heart emoji. Hmm. True. Too true, Volume 1, Chun. Did you pay her to read your comment? Nope. <laughs> she just picked that one. She just picked it because my dad's the best and he your deserves dad recognition. Is the best. Your dad is the best. And I know you did feel really bad about not shouting about <laughs> Yeah, all I was just caught up in the Ebisu madness. Saying, yeah. Before the episode started, I got to make sure I do. I got to make sure I say that in the episode. Yeah. <sighs> I forgot. And he watches the episodes and he was probably just like, like I said, Mike Wazowski. He's like, okay, here I go. <laughs> and then it doesn't happen. And then he's still happy. And I'm just like, ah! yeah, shout out Frank Perrine. He is another goat. And, um, he we in our Promise Neverland video, I think at the very beginning, there's a little clip of a Promise Neverland cosplay that he made for you and your brother at a con, and it looks so amazing. And the fact that he put that together in such a short amount of time, like he is so good at just making stuff that looks screen accurate and in and so fast. It's just like as someone who's like, you know, recently made the Berserk Sword and uh the Dory Doro mask, like just my respect for him to be able to do what he does that well is like super impressive. Yeah, and he does it with like 
duct tape and like like I said, Jimmy rigging everything, yeah. but it just looks so good. It looks great. And he's just been doing like all my life. I'm like, Dad, I need this for a project. Dad, I need I, I need your help. Can you draw this guy for me? Oh, can you draw this for my friend for his birthday? Can you do this? And I just I feel so like bad because he's just like, yeah, no, I'll mm-hmm. do it. I love doing this. This is this. Is, I love creating things. And I'm just like, Dad, you're the fucking best. What a cost. What a cool cosplay, Dad. Yeah, like someone was like talking about like their like relationship with their daughter or whatever, and he was just like, "Yeah, we talk about sports, basketball, because that's what she's into, and I'm also into it." And I was like, "Yeah, well, it's like about comic books and manga and anime with my kids." That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's, cool. That's the cooler version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and if you um, we've talked a little bit off mic and off camera about this, but you know, if you would like to see Frank Perrine, uh. uh maybe perform a custom build then let us know in the comments down below and we might film a little video of him making something for us to wear at a, at a con in the future yeah um, yeah but but let us know uh volume one you got another comment for us this one comes from rui contino even though cody cosplay is sloppy i bet no one expected from him to make an effort doro is one of my current ongoing buys Still at number 10. I will listen to you guys in the background while working. Oh, that's very oh, cool. Oh, thank that's you. Cool. Yeah. I like the first part of it. It's yeah, funny. I liked now, all of it, actually. Now here's something to just appreciate is there's little red markings that did barely show up on camera. That We don't have red makeup. That was used with fake blood, which turns out really hurts your eyes, does not wash off after... Tr- heavily applying soap to it and yeah. you will show up to work the next day with giant red circles around your eyes and people keep asking you if you're okay listen. and because it's irritating your eyes you just start crying all the time listen cody and other reasons your dedication <laughs> to the cosplay game yep. has my utmost respect that cosplay is all about pain yeah and you, and to suffer you for realize great art, that yeah. pain you can go forward and move on i I literally wore an eye patch this whole episode. Yeah, do you know how hard it is for her to see? Her you, know eye, how, you know how hard it is for my eyelashes? Her eye has already adjusted to the hurts. dark. Yeah, it's already to the dark, and I'm adjusted to the dark as well because I have a cool <laughs> eye now. How about that? And like I said, Cody, you have to <laughs> suffer for your art. Yes, exactly, Cody. And to I make her all the time. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, maybe we should not anymore. Yeah. I told him this, but just to stress, I had to go buy dumplings for that photo. You didn't have to. You didn't have to. We dumplings all like gr- are delicious. I have to purchase them. I don't just get dumplings. Yeah, you're not Megan. I don't <laughs> get dumplings. No. I literally don't want to stop I only this get narrative. free stuff from places I go to. Two <laughs> different episodes of this narrative has gone on, and I am tired of it. It ends today. You will feel my wrath. Oh, no. This narrative of you guys saying things that you have witnessed happen to me. <laughs> it has happened once in front of you, and it never happens. It r- rarely <laughs> okay, happens. And I'll take that last one. It's like a, f- it's not like a full moon. Those happen pretty relatively. You have to understand so it is like that a full you're moon. rarely, no, not- people will live their entire lives and that will never happen. Megan. That's not true. See, <laughs> you can't even comprehend it. That's how much of a part of your life you it guys. is. You guys. Yes. And if you, if you want the full context to this, you got to tune into the Berserk episode where we, um, you know, reveal. <laughs> no, you truth. don't reveal anything. You fucking gaslight me. The whole <laughs> gaslight. You gaslight That's me for at least three minutes. And I'm just sitting here. What we am I going to say? You. What do you want me to say? We spotlight you What do you want me minutes. to say? What do you want me to say? Nothing. It's not a bad thing. It's not an attack against you. It There's is nothing... an attack because. How? Of... There's nothing wrong. Are... <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong. You're not actively doing anything for these things to happen. It's not like you're going but out you're of your way. But you're blaming it on me. You I'm never not blamed blaming you. We just I said can't it happened. I control happen. my life. No, we what's... aren't saying that you have to. We're saying these are things that happen but to you. But what's weird is that you get so defensive about it. And, uh, because uh, it barely... Keep the, keep don't, the take the, don't take the eye patch off. Because it barely happens, you fuckers. <laughs> and our point is you're barely... Is most people never. never. Yeah. Oh never. Okay, let's move on. Someone... Volume one, Chan. We need another Volume fucking comment. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, sorry oh. about that, guys. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm fucking sorry. Sorry okay? that you're a likable and charming person. I'm you don't sorry. have to apologize okay, for that. I'm going to change just, myself. Just admit that it happened. And it's Why a compliment it? yeah. from everybody. Play the, play the clip. Volume one, Chan. Play another play comment. The, play first, the comment, please. Volume one, Chan. This one comes from Kenneth Senra. You should read Seraph of the End. It was very interesting series and a lot of vampires. Look to the left emoji. 
<laughs> now, this is interesting. Cody, you want to handle this one? This is uh, something I wanted to bring up. We, like, we love people, like, recommending series to us. But always, always, love always love it. Love, love, I, love. I would like to suggest that you look if we've done it already. Yeah. On the other hand, a comment's a comment. <laughs> On the other hand, a comment is a comment. But look, and hey, I don't, you know, blame anybody for not taking time out of their day to go back through our library and to see everything that we've ever reviewed. But if you got a, if you got a little bit of time, maybe go back, check it out. Because the thing is, more than anything, is that what you're saying is, I would watch this thing if it existed, and it exists. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can watch it. And the thing is, the only reason you're not watching it is because you don't think it's real, and it's real. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's a bizarre feeling like, oh, if only you guys did this episode. Like, we have it. Where yeah. are you going? Yeah, don't, don't go. Don't, don't, don't go. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> stay. Stay. Don't go. Go, the, go scroll. Just scroll a little bit more. Yeah. Let's keep going. So, and you can comment that because like Cody said, a comment is a comment. But also, you know, for yourself. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just look to see, because it might already be there. We don't blame you for not knowing we have a blame episode, okay, guys? Oh, That's not my what I'm God. I'm just saying. Megan, that was fantastic. And, you know, it's 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 there. It's not erased. We also have an episode on that, oh too. Oh, my God. Keep going. Uh, but, you know, when you think about it. Don't go berserk if you don't know we have a berserk episode. Right, because we right, do. We right. definitely do. And, you know, that goes without saying. Uh, that's all I got right now. Well, that was good. I Thank didn't think you. you could, you know, last that long. Thank you. Um, I know I huh? can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's gonna do it for another episode of Volume One. Thank you, as always, for watching and like, listening. Um, not even a minute. <laughs> okay. well, I mean, we don't have to fixate on the amount of time. It's one of those things where you get like, oh, if I say it jokingly, people will think it's not true. <laughs> okay, and we're, <laughs> we're ending the episode. We're, we're trying to wrap it up. <laughs> and don't make fun of me. Don't kick me while I'm down. You, yeah, you oh, are. you want to kick me while I'm down then? <laughs> you didn't kick, how, in what way? <laughs> okay, okay, enough! Enough of this madness. Continue, Josh. All we have to do before we get out of here, before we get out of here on our outro that's always the same and never changes, is thank our wonderful Patreon members. Yay! Thank you, as always, for all of your support. We love each and every one of you. And if you're not a Patreon member, we love everybody. No matter how you show, choose to show your support, no matter how you can give it, we love you all. Um, but if you would like to become a Patreon member and get access to some of our exclusive tiers with plenty of benefits, including shirts and stickers now, you can head on over and do that. That um, by going to patreon.com slash volume one pod. Now we get out of here on our outro that's always the same and never changes, which today is Daisuke. she's a man to make you work hard. Oh, I, don't know the song. Yeah. I don't think that's I've heard a different song. Whoa, I think, so. there she she goes. Goes. She's yeah. a, that's a different she's one. A that's a different, a different one. Song. That's a different song. Oh. Two man eater songs. She's a two. She's a man eater, make you work hard, make you sweat. Huh, thank you. Never heard that one. On the run. Seems like they stole from the other song. No, that oh, that's different completely. Here, that's your shoot you up. It's different. Okay, but different that, that, tune. That one seems more appropriate for eating. That one just seems like watch out, watch out, watch out. She's gonna just take your Let's money. just say like she's a man. Eat your heart eat out. Eat your heart out. I like eat your heart out. Till next time, eat your heart out. Watch your shoulder. Mm. Watch your shoulder. Um, Grab a cup of coffee. <clears throat> look, look. Watch out for ghouls. I think we should say that. Mm. We got to get point there. to me. Well, you know why. Uh, you know damn watch well your, why. Watch your, watch your, my vote is either for watch your shoulder or she's a man eater. And I think, or watch out for falling girders. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, that one came in at, right at the clutch, but All I'm right. in favor of that. Megan, how do you feel about it? Uh, you can still sing your little song. After. Yes. Pretend to sleep and get intel. Pretend to sleep and get intel. Oh, repeating it doesn't make it any better. I said, um, <laughs> pretend to sleep and get intel. Let's just say watch out for falling girders. Is that okay? Do we have Oh, your... wait, no, I have another one. I have another okay, one. Okay, go. Um, I have another one. Uh, pretend to go to sleep and get intel. Oh, my. I should have fucking known. Or I've... get intel pretend, by pretending to be right, Thank awesome. you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time, watch, watch out, out for falling girders. girders. Get a girdle. Oh, <laughs>